In this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the absolute value function and just the idea of absolute value in general. It's a very simple idea in principle. Um, it's just the idea of magnitude. So the absolute value, it's a real number, and it's the non-negative version of that real number. So for example, if we start with the number 3 and we want the absolute value of 3, what is the non-negative value of that number? Well, 3 is already positive, so it's equal to 3. Then we take 0. Now, depending on how in-depth you get about the positive or negative status of 0 or neither, uh, we're not going to explore that. All we're going to do is basically say, well, with 0, we don't represent 0 with a positive or negative sign in front of it. It's the number 0 and the absolute value of zero is zero. Another way of asking yourself this is, how big is the number? What is the magnitude of the number? So in the case of negative five, obviously the non-negative version of negative five is positive five. Another way of asking that is, or of talking about that is, how big is this number? If we ignore the notion of positivity or negativity, just how big is the number itself, and it's size is 5 and that idea of the magnitude can be shown visually using a, a number line so for example if I start with the value 3 so if I put 3 on my graph or on my number line then the way to represent the absolute value of 3 is to measure the distance from the origin to the value so if I put a line there and a line there, this distance is three units. Let's do another one. The second one it gives us is zero. Well, the distance from zero to zero is essentially the width of a line. So in this case, the distance is equal to zero. And maybe here I could have said this distance is equal to 3, although we don't normally bother saying that. And then finally, negative 5. If I put negative 5 over here, then if I measure the distance from here to here, even though this is the number negative 5, the distance from the origin, from 0 to there, the distance of this is equal to 5. So that's another way of thinking about absolute value. Whichever one works for you is perfectly fine. To be honest with you, um, the depth to which we'll be looking at absolute value and the absolute value function does not require a very detailed understanding of the subtleties of absolute value. Just a, a, a very intuitive understanding of the function should be sufficient. But we are going to be working with it, and some of the ways we'll work with it is going to be making use of some algebraic techniques that we use in this course. In function notation, this would be the parent function for the absolute value function. So the, the simplest absolute value function is simply the absolute value of x, where x is a member of the real numbers. So that set notation, the idea of x being a member of the real numbers, that's something we're going to be seeing a lot of. And if that's the case, then if we look at x or consider x, then the absolute value of x, well, if x is a number like 5 or 10 or 100, then the absolute value of all of those positive numbers is simply x. So if x is a number greater than or equal to 0, in other words, if x is a positive number or 0, then the absolute value function is simply x. If, on the other hand, it's a negative number, so if x were negative 5, well, the absolute value function turns negative numbers into positive numbers. So if x was negative 5, what would I do in order to change that into a positive 5? I would multiply by negative 1. So essentially, these are telling you when you have a positive number, you don't have to do anything to the number. And when you have a negative number, you multiply the number by negative 1. This dual representation of a function now it is still a function, passes the vertical line test, passes all the criteria we have for having a function, but this is a piecewise function or a piecewise representation. So the function f of x can actually be described 
and that's what we use. This is not a set of brace brackets. Notice there's no closing brace bracket. So this does not mean that this is a set like a domain or range. This is saying that these two definitions kind of funnel together to make up the function f of x. And the first definition, which is simply x for positive values or 0, the negative definition when we have negative numbers because we want to flip those negative numbers into positive numbers. Now graphically, if you take a look at that, and really let's take a look at this one piece at a time. I'm going to start with the blue piece here because it's just so much more intuitive. When f of x is equal to x, well let's just, what is the line y equals x? And that's what we have here. This is the line y equals x. And then that would continue down here to the left. So we have the line y equals x continues this way, but we've restricted it. We said we only want to be considering the line y equals x for positive values of x. And that's why we take this part away. Then we have the line y equals negative x, which would normally the line y equals negative x would continue down this way to the right but we've restricted that for values of x that are less than zero and so we take away this part and then because this is the absolute value function which we've represented in this piecewise manner these two things combine to form this v shape which is the parent function of the absolute value so when we're to the right of the y-axis, which means positive x values, it's going up to the right. When we're to the left of the x-axis, which means negative values, it's going up to the left. And you can see here, these values are always positive. Now that's only for the parent function. Just like any function, this entire piece can be moved through transformations. It can be stretched, it can be compressed, it can be reflected, it can be vertically and horizontally shifted. So don't get it in your head that, for example, this is always going to be a point at zero, zero. As we've encountered with all sorts of other functions, this can move, there can be reflections, that sort of thing. So don't think that you can't have any negative values here depending on transformations that have taken place. Now, a little bit more uh, background, uh, just in case you were to come across this. One of the things about absolute value, this idea of positives and negatives, is something that we've dealt with before when we've solved quadratic equations. So here you can see I've got a very simple quadratic equation, x squared is equal to 9. If I take the square root of both sides, because there's a variable involved here, I'm squaring a variable. I could square a positive number or a negative number to get 9 here. So when I take the square root, I have to consider that positive or negative aspect. So I get plus or minus the square root of 9. And of course, that's simply plus or minus 3. Positive 3 squared gives me 9. Negative 3 squared gives me 9. The absolute value gives us a final form that's quite simple, or quite similar, sorry. The absolute value of x is equal to 3. Well, what values, what numbers for x would yield a result like this? Obviously, positive 3, the absolute value of positive 3 is 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So we end up with a solution, plus or minus. So sometimes, and this is more for your information, but also just to serve as a bit of a warning, sometimes you will see this process where when we go from a quadratic for example and we take the square root of it when we take the square root operation the way that we show that operation is rather than having the plus minus introduced on the right side we introduce an absolute value on the left side or with the variable so just to be aware that that convention uh, is valid once you've learned about the absolute value it's not something we're going to see very often in this course in this context but it's still a valuable piece of information. Okay, so let's take a look at an inequality. So here I'm saying the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 2. I'm not saying it's equal to 2, less than or equal to 2. Now you might want to start with equal to 2. So what does that mean? 
the absolute value of x is equal to 2. The absolute value measures the distance from 0 to that number. So if I start with 0, what numbers are 2 units away from 0? Well, I can go 2 units this way. So that means obviously 2. And I can also go 2 units this way. And that takes me as far as negative 2. So that's part A. That's what I've done here on this first one. Represent the absolute value of x is equal to 2 on the number line. I end up with two points, one at 2 and one at negative 2. Now I want to extend this to less than or equal to 2. Now less than or equal to means it includes the answer from here. That was simply equal to. So that means this number 2 and this number negative 2 are both included. Now, what other numbers are two units or less from the origin? Well, one is only one unit from the origin, negative one, 0.5, negative 0.5, 1.5. Basically, everything between negative two and positive two. I admit that's a little awkward, but you can see what I'm doing there. So basically, I've just put a thickened line there. Um, some people also, another way you might represent this is you've got your two values here at negative 2 and 2. And because you don't want to necessarily be scribbling, or maybe you're not necessarily using another number, another way that I accept doing this is to do something like that. So you're saying that these two values kind of bracket my interval, and then it's everything in between here. Technically, this is the better of the two solutions, but sometimes we have to make concessions for practicality. Just working with pencil and paper, you might have to do something like this um, alternate solution. Okay, and I think we're going to wrap up here with a, uh, uh, an equation that involves absolute value. And so once again, just remember, we, we did an example like this for x the absolute value of x is equal to 2 and that gave, gave us x is equal to plus or minus 2 those are the possible values in this case we've got something a little bit more complicated here you want to simplify as much as you can isolate your absolute value but at some point in time you're going to have to deal with it it's not particularly difficult to deal with to get rid of the absolute value simply means I have to consider positive and negative. Now I'm not even talking about a much more complicated situation. What if you have absolute values on both sides, that sort of thing. We're not going to be talking about that. But for something as simple as this, I end up with x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 3. I have to consider both the positive and negative solutions here. And I could do just to, what if I did something like this? let y equal x minus 2. I think we would all agree then that this equation becomes absolute value of y is equal to 3, which becomes y is equal to plus or minus 3, and we end up right back with what I've shown you, x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 3. Now from there, what we're going to do is split that into two equations. The first of those equations is x minus 2 is equal to positive 3, and the second of those equations is x minus 2 is equal to negative 3. And you've got lots of experience with doing things like this, solving quadratic equations, solving trigonometric equations, using the cast rule, the idea of multiple quadrants, all of those things. So this one we end up with x is equal to 5, and with this one we end up with x is equal to negative 1. And those are the two solutions. And if you wanted to verify your solutions, you could do a left side, right side check. Let me just go, I'm going to verify x is equal to 5. And so my left side is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2, which is equal to the absolute value of 5 minus 2, which is equal to the absolute value of 3, which of course is simply equal to 3. My right side is equal to, and let's just go back and take a look, the right side here is equal to 3. And as you can see, they're already equal. Left side equals right side, which means x equals 5 is a correct solution. And of course, I'm quite confident that I could also verify that x equals negative 1 is a valid solution.
And I believe that is it for this lesson.